Hi, I'm Johnny from ultimatepapermache.com and I just now finished this globe that I've been working on. Um, I started it a couple weeks ago actually, but then I got involved in other projects and so it's taken longer than it than it really should have. Um, I stole this idea. It's a, it's a chalkboard globe and I saw one on the internet somewhere and I thought, hey, that would be really fun to have. And I had a really specific reason I wanted one. I, I think it'd be really fun to get little tiny stickers and put stickers um, everywhere that one of our ancestors lived before they came to the United States. Um, or in one case, where she was in the United States and then moved. And I just thought that would be really fun to have the whole family uh, on this globe. Kind of sad we're not going to have any on this side. Uh, most, of, most of our ancestors, of course, came from Europe, and I went to all this trouble to put Indonesia and Japan, and, <laughs> and, and they're not going to get any stickers. Um, let me show you how I made this. Uh, like I said, I got the beach ball, got it at Walmart, two dollars and something cents, and then I put some plaster gauze over it. Uh, you just cut the gauze up into fairly long strips and then dip it in warm water and put it over the beach ball. It, it will dry, or well not dry, but harden in about 10 minutes. You can buy plaster gauze at any hobby store or you can buy it online. Uh, it's not terribly expensive. And the reason I used it is just because it made the ball really solid right at the beginning. I didn't have to worry about the, the ball changing shapes because the house gets warmer or colder or whatever. Uh, sometimes that can be a real problem when you're using paper mache over um, something that's inflated with air. So then after that I put on one layer of uh, brown paper just to make it smoother. Obviously not a whole lot smoother because the, the brown paper wrinkled a little bit, but I did squish it down just as flat as I could. And then um, once that was done, I found a map online that was specifically designed uh, for making globes at home. And I had to, I had to stretch it out in my photo um, processing program. I didn't do it quite right. This, this particular ball has a 45 inch circumference. I wanted the map to be printed 45 inches wide and somehow I became just a tad bit short. I don't know if it was because I didn't do it right or because uh, my computer doesn't compute inches exactly right or maybe the printer did it wrong. I don't know. But I didn't want to print it over because that's an awful lot of colored ink and it's expensive. So I went with it. It's just, it just um, really, really close and there's just probably in a couple thousand extra square miles in the Pacific Ocean, so I don't care. It's all right. So once that was on there and I flattened it down just as flat as I could with this little plastic thing that I got, um, the, it was from, it, it's for people who use uh, Bondo and that kind of stuff. Um, I got that online too. I just happened to see it and thought, hey, I could use that. And it, did, it really did come in handy. It squashed it down uh, so that the map is really flat and the globe ended up being much uh, smoother than it would have without it. In order to get the lines, I didn't want to cover up the whole map obviously, so I used a felt tip pen and made double lines all the way around the outside of the continents and, and major islands. And that um, was then after I, when I went to paint it, um, the, I didn't put the black paint inside those lines, of course. I wanted, wanted to make sure that I didn't entirely cover up my map. So when the black paint was dry, I could go back and use the, uh, some white paint. I actually used some kind of shiny paint that I got. Um, I got a whole lot of it when I was making the frog, I think it was. I, I think I used a little bit of green on the frog and then I had this whole um, kit left. And so I used a white that's kind of shiny or opalescent. So it stands out uh, really nicely against the matte black. <laughs> I just finished it. Um, it. It's still wet. The white is still wet, so I'm being really careful not to, to touch it in the wrong place. Uh, as soon as this is dry, uh, then I'm going to take it downstairs and I'm going to try to find some little teeny itty bitty colored uh, stickers and then get out the, the list of uh, ancestors and start, uh, start putting them on here. I think this is going to be a really fun project. If you're um, doing a project for a like a science fair or something, then I'm not sure your teacher's going to let you get away with the whole map 
thing, especially if you don't uh, print it out exactly right like I did and, and, and things are just a teensy bit off. But if you're trying to, you know, if you if you're uh, if you got a project where you need a um, like Saturn or a whole group of planets, uh, this is a really fast way to get them. If I left the ball in there, and I think it makes it just a little bit heavier, but it's still, you know, it's still fairly light. Uh, it's probably about um, the weight that you would normally expect of a globe this size. So it wasn't that bad. If you haven't been to my website lately, I want to make sure that you come out. We've had a lot of really good uh, guest posts out there. And one way to make sure that you don't miss any of them is to sign up for my newsletter. You'll see the sign up box over on the right hand side of my um, every page of my website. So that was my project for today. I hope you had fun with it. Come and visit me, ultimatepapermache.com.